Hello and welcome back. I am recording this video on a beautiful and sunny Earth Day, and today we're going to be talking about what is possibly the best timing ever, uh, how the sun interacts with the Earth. Um, and specifically, we're going to talk uh, about this concept of radiation and how the Earth is able to get radiation energy from the sun. Uh, you may remember from the last lesson we talked about how you can actually calculate the amount of power a radiating object is able to supply in watts. Um, and we're going to use that. We're going to use that number of the amount of power that the sun is radiating. But the Earth doesn't actually receive all of that power. The Earth only receives a small cross-section of the sun's ultimate power that's being emitted in all directions. So today we're going to talk about how much energy does the Earth actually receive from the sun. And this will kick us off. Um, to one final discussion about the physics of climate change, uh, because that energy is very important to the energy balance of the Earth. So in order for us to start talking about this, we need to talk about a concept that we haven't really referred to yet in this class, and that is intensity. Intensity is a measure of the power of an object, but also uh, a measure related to the area. So kind of like how pressure is a force for a given amount of area that you could have um, a very high pressure, even if you didn't have a, a ton of force, just because you have a very small area. Intensity is kind of the analogous when we look into power. Um, an example that you have maybe experienced, and I'm thinking of this now as the sun is beating down, is you've potentially, uh, at some point in your lives, used uh, a magnifying glass to concentrate the sun's energy on a very tiny area. Now, the amount of intensity is going to be very different from where the magnifying glass is receiving the sun to where that poor ant is being burned alive. Uh, the amount of power is actually the same. Uh, it's the amount of power that the, the magnifying glass used or received initially, but the area has changed dramatically. So we're going to calculate this as power divided by area, which means our units are going to be the units of power, watts, divided by our units of area, meters squared. Um, IB will typically present this as watts per square meter, our W, M to the minus 2. Now, specifically, we can look at this in terms of this Earth-Sun relationship. If I wanted to calculate the amount of power, the intensity of sun's radiation that's actually arriving at Earth, um, we need to figure out something based on how far the sun is from the Earth. If you think of the sun's power emanating in all directions, um, you can actually imagine that there is a sphere that is getting bigger and bigger around the sun. And the sun's power overall is being spread out evenly across the sphere, which means that the farther away you get from the sun, the bigger the sphere is that we are spreading this power out over. Um, a great analogy I like to think of is imagine you have a balloon and you're blowing that balloon bigger and bigger and bigger. As it gets bigger, the wall of the balloon gets thinner as you go because it's being stretched over a much bigger area and it has to be thinner in order to achieve that same volume. Same thing happens with the intensity of the sun as it gets to the earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sun's overall power. Um, in astrophysics, we're actually going to calculate this value using that Stefan Boltzmann's law that we talked about last lesson. Um, and we're going to use the Earth's distance from the sun. In this particular case, we're actually not going to use this the way you would normally think. We're going to use our Earth's distance from the sun as the radius of the sphere that is around the sun that has to be divided evenly for this power. So if I wanted to find the power that there is, or the intensity, I just take the power of the sun divided by the area that it must be spread out over. Now, the area isn't the area of the Earth in this case. It's the area of the sphere that the Earth sits on, which is kind of a weird thing to think of. But think of this imaginary sphere around the sun, and the Earth is right on the surface of that sphere. We talked last time about the surface area of the sphere. That is 4 pi r squared, four times the area of a circle of the same radius. So if we plug in these values, um, the power being 3.84 times 10 to the 26th watts, and the area 4 pi times the diameter, um, the distance from the sun squared, we get an intensity that's uh, about 1,358 watts for every square meter. Um, this is going to be an important number. We call this number the solar constant. The solar constant is the average intensity that falls on an area of the Earth or technically above the Earth's atmosphere, that is perpendicular to the direction traveled by the sun. 
Um, so basically, we can think of this as the maximum intensity that the Earth could receive. We're going to see a little bit that this isn't always going to be that high, um, but it's a good starting point for us. So I'm going to copy in what we calculated on the last slide, 1,360 watts for every square meter. Um, a way that this is often presented is in scientific notation. So 1.36 times 10 to the third just does a better job of presenting the, the actual precision of that. There's only three sig figs that are there. Um, and IB includes this in the data packet, packet as a constant because this is a really important number. Now, an important thing to know about this, we call it the solar constant, which feels like it's something that's based on the sun alone. But very, very importantly, the solar constant here is dependent on Earth being that distance from the sun. So the solar constant would be very different if you lived on Mars because it's so much farther away that the amount of intensity by the time it gets to Mars is going to be that much smaller. So if we wanted to calculate the average, um, our conversation is going to be a little bit different here. So I'd like you to imagine that here we have the Earth, <laughs> uh, and we're going to do some imagination. Imagine that the Earth is casting a shadow on a wall. Um, obviously, there isn't a wall that big behind the Earth, but imagine, if you will, that the sun hits the Earth and the Earth creates this shadow. And if we wanted to find the area of that shadow, that would be equivalent to basically how much power did the Earth capture from the sun. Um, so if that shadow is left, uh, all of that energy presumably was absorbed by the Earth. Now, in order to figure out the area captured, we need to know the radius of the Earth that's provided up here. So if I wanted to find the area of this uh, shadow, that's just going to be the area of a circle, pi r squared. Pi r squared, in this case, gives you a value of 1.27 times 10 to the 14th meter squared. And again, that is the cross-section of this shadow, basically figuring out how big, round, uh, is that Earth in two dimensions. So then if I wanted to use that along with the solar constant, we know um, that the sun provides 1,360 watts for every square meter. And now we know how many square meters the sun is blocking. We can actually calculate how much power um, from the sun the Earth captures. That value is about 1.7 times 10 to the 17th watts. That's a huge number for our power. Um, the Earth receives a ton of power from the sun every day. Now, that actually is going to help us find a more useful average intensity um, or average power on our Earth. So this is the intensity that the sun provides, but sometimes uh, the Earth is experiencing, or a point on the Earth is experiencing day, sometimes it's experiencing night. Not all points on the Earth are equally receiving the sun in a given amount of time. So let's imagine that we have the average on the spread out over the Earth's surface. If this is the total power that is being received, this 1.7 times 10 to the 17th, and that is spread out over the whole Earth's surface, we know that the surface area of a sphere is just 4 pi r squared, and we know that the radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th. So if I divide that total power divided by the area to find a new intensity, I can find that the intensity on average across the Earth's surface is about 340 watts for every square meter. Notice that this is significantly smaller than our solar constant, but it's important to realize that if you put a solar panel out on Earth's surface, on average, it's going to receive 340 watts per square meter. Now, you may be thinking, okay, if half the day is night and half the day is day, um, why wouldn't it just be half of that solar constant? Well, the reality of this is not all points on Earth receive that perfect perpendicular that is required to achieve the solar constant. So some is actually spread out over more area um, because it's not hitting directly. 